Abia State Workforce has embarked on an indefinite industrial action in compliance with the directive of the National Labor Union. Now, the state chairman of the Nigeria Labor Congress, Ogunaya Okoro, in the company of some labor leaders, were in some government establishments to enforce compliance. He said labor will only back down after the federal government meets its demand of 400,000 naira minimum wage. Meanwhile, some residents of Umuahia have shared their opinions about the development. To do the needful. After a long, protracted meeting with the organized labor, NSC and TUC, the federal government in their own self have failed to be considerate. They have failed to take the, the welfare of workers of Nigeria into consideration. And in the joint labor force, the NSC and TUC have directed for a total shutdown all over the nation, both federal establishments, state establishments, local government, private sector, be it in the parastatals or agency, they are all involved. I wanted to work and the number of people around me couldn't enter the office. Everywhere is locked and I, I asked the government to do something to improve the salary of the workers or the workers. Much, at least, I asked the federal government to do something about it. At least, yeah, with the economic hardship and other things to increase the salaries of the workers because they are really suffering. I'm so happy about what is going on. But we have been suffering. Like as a civil servant, there are so many expectations we have. But we want the federal government to help us. Because things in the market is going to be as a you know, as a as a The, the strike uh, is, uh, is, is a good one, but uh, I feel that uh, what the NLC or the amount that they are asking for is not uh, a realistic one. And I think they, they should be asking or they should be demanding for the right thing once and for all life. For example, they should try to request or demand for a central uh, salary structure for every uh, person in Nigeria, both um, the government uh, sector and the private sector. That a, a senator should, shouldn't earn money more than a, a professor in the uh, school. So I think if they can meet the government and um, get a central salary structure for everyone, all right, still talking about the strike. Uh, we have our correspondent, um, Bernard Akede, in Lagos, standing by. Hello, Bernard. Yes. All right, Bernard, can you hear me? All right, we'll try to... Bernard, if you can hear me, please go ahead and tell us what the situation report is like where you are at the moment in Lagos and how are the uh, striking walkers uh, conducting themselves? Well, we just moved away from um, the Lagos University Teaching Hospital last week where initially on, upon arrival it seemed like everything was going on as usual, was business as usual. But as we were going around and monitoring the situation, we saw a handful of union workers uh, with leaves in their hands chanting songs of solidarity. Then we knew that um, there also was compliance or would be compliance in the health sector. We were able to speak to some of the officials of the Labour Congress there and they told us that because it is the health sector and they know how sensitive that area is, that the compliance will not be 100%. Um, they did tell us that emergency units will still be operational while other units will be operating on a skeletal level. But that as the strike action eventually progresses, um, they would eventually affect 
certain parts of the health sector. But then again, they still reminded us that as, as far as emergency services um, are concerned, they would ensure that if there are any emergencies, they will handle that. Now, behind me is a fuel station, um, a mobile filling station, like some other filling stations within Lagos that we have seen. Um, we are beginning to see queues build up in some of these places. They are selling petrol and other products as usual, but this may be as a result of panic buying, and that's why we're seeing the queues. More often than not, when there's a pending strike action or an ongoing strike action, citizens tend, tend to come out in numbers to buy product from fuel stations, uh, just in case the petroleum sector also gets affected. So for now, these are the places that we've seen. We've seen the secretariat being on, on lockdown. We've seen the health sector also being affected. And now we're seeing the petroleum industry um, also, you know, the, the, the strike also taking its own toll on the petroleum industry. Remember that this is just day one of this indefinite strike action. Tomorrow, we wait to see what happens. All right. Uh, now we also have, uh, thank you, Bennett. We also have... Uh, Joshua Imarai in Abuja and Chizo Ba Anyongwe in Plateau State. So Joshua, uh, please go ahead and tell us what are Abuja workers saying about the ongoing nationwide strike? Yeah, move. They are saying if they had known, they would have ceased, ceased put in their houses. However, uh, most of them are heading back home. And one thing we must know that is that Banks are cur currently on a shutdown. Now, most people who are stuck in town could not access funds to go back home. Some who need to do one or two things in the bank have met a closed door, a shut door, awaiting them in the banking sector. So naturally, this has degenerated into what might become a financial crisis in the coming future. All right. Um, what about uh, some of the hospitals? Because we also heard information, we had information that, you know, there are some students who are actually writing WIAC in some schools. Have you heard anything about that? Essential services. Information as concerning schools and hospitals. But we'll do so in the forthcoming time. All right. Well, thank you. Now uh, let's move on to Chizoba and Yongwe. Chizoba, if you can hear me. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. And go ahead and uh, give us an update of uh, the industrial action happening in Plateau State. Tell us how workers are complying with this action. Well, thank you for having me uh, here in Plateau State, in just in particular, in Capital State. Um, workers, especially the state government workers, are not going to work. Main gate was totally shut down and locked. You know, and then officials of the NLC and the CUC are there to make sure that no one gains entrance. And then around the city, we went around and we saw that um, the vehicular movement is just like the normal thing we used to see every day, irrespective of the strike. You know, and then most banks are shut down. A few of them that were not um, complying after the NLC executives went around to see the the level of compliance, and they were asked to shut them. Every other thing has been going on just as usual, you know. I am right here at the DP Zang Way, at the popular hill station roundabout. So everybody is talking about the normal businesses, but major places of work, nothing is the question. Oh, okay, I'm just trying to understand, Chizoba. Is it also a case of, you know, workers not being sure of the strike and uh, you know going to work before you know the offices before finding out that the offices was uh, the of their offices were being shut down and then going back home or do you still have people who are hoping that the offices will open up and they would go into work at the moment people are hanging around hoping to that there will be a change uh, it's a sorry case for them actually that they put it that way because um, as, at, as early as 8 o'clock, 8.30, we were there at the Secretariat uh, Junction where workers were expected to probably come and then be asked to go back home. But none of them were there except for the NLC. Um, uh. And so a few people were hanging around actually, but of course they were not allowed entrance into the premises. So up till now, I left there like 30 minutes ago, and there was still no movement as for being 
All right. Uh, thank you, Chizoba. We also have uh, our correspondent, Marshall, who is in Lagos State, at the airport in Lagos State. Hello, Marshall. Thank you so much for reconnecting with us. Now, we actually want you to tell us, uh, you know, uh, how the airlines and passengers especially are actually being impacted by the shutdown since uh, there are no flights going out or even coming in. Well, as reported earlier, we had uh, the morning, you had passengers who had come expecting to be airlifted to their various destinations, and uh, they were stranded. You found them, you found them uh, locked uh, by the gate, but right now they've all dispersed. You have people who are here, uh, members of the Trade Union Congress and NLC and their amalgamated uh, members, unions. And for them, it seems to be like a day off from work. It's almost like a carnival here. Yeah, they seem to be having so much fun. In the background, <laughs> and a few of them dancing. I, I still have Mr. Emmanuel Jaja here, whom I'd like to ask, what have you got to say to passengers whose uh, flights were cancelled and they were made to turn back uh, this morning? Well, we have appealed to them in the morning, and we'll continue to appeal to them. We feel their pain because some of them are going on their private businesses, but because of these circumstances, and uh, what can I say? In Nigeria, if the government is sincere, they will not allow this to happen to their citizens, because what is happening to labor cut across every other member, and labor is the only mouthpiece of a common man on the streets. So we appeal with them, we sympathize with them, uh, we feel their pains, and as soon as government come up with something interesting, they will fly. However, we expect that all the airlines should contact their passenger and tell them the situation of things. Mr. Emmanuel Jaja, the um, Attorney General had said this strike is illegal. How is your union and other unions taking it? And also, what do you have to say about the work, no work, no pay uh, policy of the federal government? Well, this is, uh, I can say, I am laughing here. When you say it's illegal, I don't know what is illegal. As a union, don't we have the right to protest? We have the right to protest. And over the time, as a Nigerian, I have seen several orders that was issued to the government and they didn't obey. I'm also a Nigerian. So I'm part and parcel of the illegality, if that is what they said. But we were informed. We have informed them what we want to do because this negotiation did not start yesterday. It didn't start today. In fact, the last negotiation, the six governors that are in the tripartite meeting, none of them appear in the meeting meaning they show no seriousness. So they want to see what will happen. So issue of legality or no legality should not come. If we go to law court, the lawyers are there to sort themselves out about that. Mr. Emmanuel Jaja, thank you very much. Emmanuel Jaja is the deputy president of, the, of ATSAN, and they've made arrangement for setting logistics and welfare for their members who are complying for this uh, strike. We've got an ambulance also waiting to take people who might be distressed and they've also made arrangements for food and water and other soft drinks uh, for their members here. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Marshall. Please uh, still stay. Uh, Bernard, what, what do you have to say, uh, let's say, in the coming day about uh, this strike? Well, um, I, I just got information from somebody who came from the airport where Marshall is. Uh, Marshall is at the, uh, the domestic wing of the Lagos airport. And I'm hearing some kind of rumor that they may take this to the international airport by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that the reason why the international airport was spared is because there already are flights in the air as, as, as at now that we speak. Um, so it will be um, a bit tricky to disrupt such flight activities. But that tomorrow morning there's possibilities that um, the international airport will also be affected. That the road from Oshodi Bridge all the way down to the airport will be cordoned off and that the toll gate as well to the airport will be cordoned off. That will be taking it a step um, higher. Um, we do not know if WAEC examinations will be affected, although we're hearing that the West African Examination Council is saying um, that because the exams is not just a Nigerian exam, it's a West African exam, they'll do everything to see that activities are not disrupted. So it's looking like the Labor, Labor Union and the Trade Union Congress um, are intending to go every length to ensure that this industrial action would completely cripple activities of the country until their demands are met. Should this happen, um, like the saying goes, where the two elephants fight, the grass will suffer. In this case, again, like many times in the past, the grass here are the people of Nigeria who may just be the ones suffering from this industrial action.
All right, uh, Bernard, let's uh, hope that it doesn't get that far. And uh, by God's grace, tomorrow, uh, the federal government and the labor union will be able to come to a compromise and uh, see an end to the strike. Thank you so much, Austin from Delta State, uh, Emmanuel, uh, Joshua from Abuja. We also have uh, Emmanuel from Abuja as well. We also have uh, Chizoba in Plateau State and uh, Bernard and Marshall in Lagos State. Thank you so much for the update.